Hi and welcome to Battlefield Dev Talks. This is the third episode uh, of I don't know how many and I have David with me today and Eric who is our lead engagement designer. That's right. um, actually a colleague of mine so we work together on a daily basis. This episode is all about weapons and we're going to start off with David and then we're going to keep on going with Eric who will talk about specializations and progression. But can you please give us an update, David, on what's been going on the last couple of weeks? I can. I will do the sort of dev update. We're trying to do this every time we do these dev talks. Mm. Just have a, where are we? What are we doing? Yeah. What, what have we been talking about before? And yeah. how, will, how have we changed things in certain subjects? So let's kick it off with soldier visibility or visibility in general. We showed you this last dev talk. We, we showed you a distance haste test. We got a lot of feedback, both yeah, positive. Yeah, I can see stuff, and ah, why are you Please destroying? Please don't destroy it. <laughs> don't destroy my contrast on yeah. this level. Uh, and of course, that was a test, and that was intended to be sort of over the top, so you understood the difference here, and you understood the problem because it's not straightforward. You can't just turn up one knob and then visibility goes away or the problem goes away, uh, and it looks beautiful. You can't have both. You have to no. sort of find a middle ground here. Uh, and I think we have, what you see now is uh, closer to what we will ship with uh, for Rotterdam, that map specifically. Obviously this is specific to every map and every sort of weather state. Mm. But in the clear weather on every map we're going for, you can see things and yeah. people to shoot at. Um, further on, we talked about netcode as well. We had some uh, time to death situations where players reported in the open beta that uh, they died too quickly. Mm. And some of that is probably because they got two bullets of damage in one update. Uh, and the reason we have problems with that again, we've had this in the past, is because we have higher rate of fire weapons and most likely also longer delays. So we're doing a, a bigger test suite now where we look at everything there is delay-wise in the game, comparing it to BF1 currently, so in its current state, which is a pretty good state, uh, which we want to beat or be as good as, that's the goal. Uh, and when we get past that initial one, we're also going to look at input lag uh, as part of this whole process. Because to a player, when you press a button, you shoot a bullet and it hits something and you get a feedback chime on you hitting something, that's the full flow of it. And the shorter that is, the more tight the whole game experience feels. Mm. Uh, and we want that to include the actual button press, because that also matters. That's connected to frame rate, platform, uh, well, peripheral, everything. <laughs> But on average, we want that to be also better than BF1 and most games out there, of course. Mm. Uh, and finally, we are looking at aim assist for console or for controllers. So in this world where con console controllers and keyboard and mouse are used interchangeably on all platforms uh, and a future where crossplay seems to be a thing, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that our aim assist plays to our game strengths. And currently, the aim assist we have in the game have two components. One is the auto rotation or the snap depending on which game franchise you normally play, it's essentially the initial rotation help that you get from uh, pressing the aim down sights button close enough to a joint of, uh, of the soldier, so uh, like a shoulder joint or a knee joint or something like that. Uh, and we want to remove that completely and, and look at the other part, which is magnetism. Uh, helps you slow down your sight over enemies uh, and reacquire targets that way. So it's easier to track them, but it's not easier, and you don't get a crutch for sort of mm. finding the, the initial one. And the reason we're doing that is because our fully automatic weapons that we added uh, in this game, like assault rifles and SMGs and other fully automatics like the MMGs, even in hipfire, uh, they're slightly too easy to use. Uh, you just press the button and you snap on. If you're close enough, you're sort of going to win that fight uh, by default on average. And we want the guy with a headshot rifle or a magnum revolver or something to be able to just say, oh, I'm going to try and shoot you in the head and then you, know, you might win that fight. Uh, and right now that's hard uh, because you have a very slim uh, timeline to, to do that on. So removing this should slow down time to kill overall mm. uh, or the average engagement at the very least. And it's as deadly as before. <laughs> and that's my little update. Yeah. Heading over to Eric. Uh, and you're here to talk about, like I said, specialization and progression. Yeah. And I'm going to start off with a super easy question since <laughs> you're new here. Um, so what have we done with the specializations uh, since the open beta? Yeah. I think uh, specializations was uh, one of those things we got a lot of feedback on in the open beta. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we agreed with a lot of things that were said as well. So we've gone back and we looked a lot at what we can do with the specializations to make them feel more like what we want them to be, which is more interesting choices that impacts the way you play and not just straight upgrades on the yeah. weapon, right? Uh, 
So one of the things we've done is that we've uh, made sure that it's a choice from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So as you'll see when we look at them, it, it's uh, always a choice from level one down to... Yeah, you have A and B on. columns here. Right? Always, yeah. I think we also uh, worked a lot with the UI to actually explain to you the impact of the choice to the weapon uh, when you do a specialization on it, both benef beneficial and then sort of side grades or downgrades on, on the weapon. Uh, so I think that will that will help a lot. Uh, I have two questions for you, uh, and it's two questions that people have had a lot of <laughs> of comments about. And the first one is that players felt that the progression or the, the weapon specialization actually gave you a too large of an advantage versus other players. Um, I would just like to help you help them to be calm. So can you please explain what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, well, again, we don't want players to feel like they are at an sort of objective disadvantage when they start off the game, just because of the specialization. So what we're looking at is that the, the starter weapons that you'll have, they will probably have some type of predefined specializations already on them. Mm -hmm. So while you might not have as much freedom of choice as someone that's played a lot with that weapon from the beginning, you should never feel like you're sort of as a, at a disadvantage just because you're coming in as a new player. Um, so right. that's one of the important things we're doing. Yeah. yeah. The second thing that people had a lot of feedback uh, about is that it was very hard to understand the whole progression thing. And I, and I kind of get it, I, and I, I'm, I'm not surprised by it, because there was a lot of the UI actually missing. So just let us know what's actually here now, and yeah. what's supposed no, to be. No, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, that, that's the thing, right? I think one of the big missing pieces that wasn't there in mm -hmm. the open beta was the, the player profile, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of where you'll see all the progression and, and stats and, and awards that you get as you, as you play the game. Um, and one of the big aspects of the player profile is the sort of progression hub, where you see both your weapons and classes and vehicles, really anything that you can progress on in the game, uh, and get sort of a very visual overview of uh, where you're at in the progression and how does the actual journey look at uh, look like for all these things. Uh, so if you look at the weapons specifically, uh, you'll see this very sort of visual overview of how the weapon journey looks like. And then what you'll see is that in the beginning of the journey, we're very focused on the sort of gameplay and specialization aspects of it. And that's not something that we want to just sort of artificially stretch out. That doesn't help us become a better competitive shooter. Uh, but we do want to ease you into all the choices you get to make with yeah. that weapon. I mean, they're there for every choice when it comes to gameplay is there to sort of help you find your playstyle with this weapon, mm. right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and there are different choices to sort of specialize, hence the name, <laughs> uh, how you use it and, yeah. and what you're good at with it, right? Precisely. And then the, the second part of the progression is more focused about sort of the proficiency and mastery of that weapon. So we'll have these uh, assignment chains, for example, which really uh, focus on both sort of teaching you the in, uh, in and outs of the mm -hmm. weapon and how to use it, but also towards the end, just showing like really the mastery of that weapon. So that's both about showing skill and time spent with that weapon. And the rewards from these things is also some of the sort of coolest weapon sets we have in the game. So when you see someone on the battlefield running around with those weapons, uh, you know that you know they know their, their way around that gun. And if they're on, on your team, you can be sort of safe that they, they, they're someone you want to have on your side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say thank you to you two, uh, and I'm going to bring in two other guys who actually knows everything there is to know about weapons and, and the skills regarding the weapons. So thank you very much for this thank time. You. I will see you around, and hi and welcome. Uh, we have Florian and we have Adrian. Um, you might have not seen these two guys before, or you may have, but I'm still going to let you guys introduce yourself, uh, starting off with Adrian. Yeah, so hi, I'm uh, Adrian DeRuter. Um, I'm a core game designer on uh, Battlefield 5. Hi, I'm uh, Florian LeBian, and I'm a core gameplay designer on Battlefield 5 too. And you're actually a previous pro gamer, right? Yeah. Which, to... which makes this kind of interesting, I would say. So you know everything there is to know about weapons. Um, and that is why you're here, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, we have three sections or areas we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to start off with the gunplay in Battlefield 5, head over to feedback from the open beta. And then we're going to show off some new weapons um, that you haven't seen before. So let's start off with the gunplay. Uh, so I have a question here that is, what's the ambition uh, with the Battlefield 5 gunplay and the general direction that we're taking? So I think for, for Battlefield 5, uh, what we did is we, we set out uh, two uh, big pillars for, for ourselves. So uh, the first one was uh, have a clear uh, weapon character and feel for each of our weapon classes. So make them feel distinct, uh, but at the same time not restrict them too much to that behavior. So examples are like um, uh, assault rifles are all about like burst firing. Um, 
semi-autos are all about like finding that rhythm uh, to fire. The, the, the bolt actions are all about that single shot uh, to land. Um, and then the second pillar, which is the, it's the main one, is uh, we wanted our players to uh, really be able to learn and master uh, our, our gu gunplay in general. And um, in order to do that, we set out a few steps. And uh, the first step was we want to allow the player to uh, understand what was going on, because if that's not the case, it will frustrate the player, probably, mm -hmm. if stuff's going on that he, he or she can't uh, foresee. But if a uh, player can, then that means that they learn what's going on. And mm -hmm. if they learn, that means that they can improve. So those were the steps that we set out to, to do with our gunplay. Yeah. yeah, and we wanted to make the experience, I mean, you as a player to feel more in control uh, and make it a more physical experience. Right. So when you actually are firing a weapon, you really feel like you're actually in control of that weapon. You're actually you are able to control that weapon. Mm. And, and, when if you move, and when you move around the map, combined with the, the movement systems that we have, you really feel like you always have a responsive and controlled experience. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you think you can go a bit into the details of what changes we've actually been making during the development and what it took to actually get to where we are today? Yeah, so we started from basically going through the, the previous Battlefield titles and trying to understand what players actually really liked about mm -hmm. those titles and the things where we actually could use some small improvements. One thing that we realized is that uh, spread is something that is really, really hard to communicate to the players. Mm. And we really tried our best to actually improve on that area. And so the main first thing we've done is we tied spread to the front side so that the, we the weapon actually moves according to that. So you can actually understand whenever you actually are not in control of your weapon anymore mm. because there's too much spread, um, you will actually see your actual weapon moving around. So you actually get an instant feedback. We've done some extra changes with adding the uh, recoil pattern. So uh, yeah. in the initial first few bullets are very, very easy to distinguish because you always get more or less the same trend. Uh, we added a meaningful single fire mode that actually changes the stats of the weapon. So yeah. you can actually fire on longer ranges with a assault rifle. Um, and we also have a bunch of extra systems on the hood that we actually can use to tailor the experience to actually what we want to build with that specific weapon to build character. Mm. I'm going to move over to open beta feedback uh, and just general feedback that you guys have, have heard um, regarding the weapon balance and the gunplay. Would you like to just speak freely about it? Yeah, uh, so the, the main one is time to kill. It always comes back. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still looking at it and we've done a few changes already uh, since the open beta. We actually did a few days after the open beta, yeah. which changed the uh, base damage of the automatic rifles from, I mean, automatic rifles, yeah, auto automatics actually, mm -hmm. from 27 to 25. Uh, and to compensate for that, we moved the hedge multiplier to two times. So it looks like a minor changes, but actually helps a lot with, yeah. especially since you run on low health most of the time, uh, with actually being able to survive. But for a normal player, I mean, for a player that can aim, that will actually not really change a lot. Yeah. Uh, and we're also still looking at the netcode. Uh, there's a lot of around that still. Any specific changes uh, you've made to specific weapons, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Uh, a few. <laughs> a few. Um, I, th I think the big one is probably is the SG44. Uh, mm. We've seen a lot of feedback about it. Yeah. Uh, we looked at data, and uh, we're actually kind of happy with some aspects of it, and less happy uh, with others. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like a jack of all trades, that weapon. It's kind of supposed to be kind of uh, good for all situations, but not really specialized for yeah. any of those. And we kind of saw that for our medium to medium long range, but we, we found it a bit too overperforming on our shorter ranges, short to medium. Yeah. So we're doing some, uh, some tweaks there. Yeah, and some uh, other changes we're doing. I mean, we, during the open beta, we, we heard the players saying that the, the sites, for instance, were a bit too dark. Yeah. So we were looking at the, the tint. We, we changed the, the, the tint itself, but we also made the, the crosshair a bit more visible. Mm. Because what happens when you reduce the tint is that the crosshair also goes away. <laughs> so we're making it a bit better. Um, we're also looking at the LMGs, the performance in general. I know that during the open beta, the the bipod animation was a bit broken. Yeah. Obviously, we've, we fixed that, so now it will behave quite well. Uh, but we also have done changes across the board mm. on the, those LMGs when it comes to recall. Mm. Um, one good example is the KE-7. That is now our starter weapon. Uh, the horizontal recall and vertical recall got, got a bunch of adjustments to actually really fit 
uh, what we're trying to build with that specific weapon. Yeah, yeah we found it a little too demanding compared to our other uh, automatic rifles. Mm -hmm. It is a, a more heavy weapon class compared to the other ones, but we, we shaped it a bit into yep. uh, yeah. a bit more user-friendly. I'm going to showcase a couple of new weapons that mm -hmm. the, the community hasn't seen before. Um, we're going to start off, though, with the MG42, which actually is a weapon that has been seen in, in a couple of BFI footage. Um, so what is the MG42? So the MG42 is a MMG, which is used by our support class. Um, we haven't shown our MMGs for a little while. We showed an MG34 for the first closed alpha. Um, and this is the, probably the, 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 the heavy, heavy brother <laughs> of, uh, of, the, of the MG34. It's, it's uh, has a super high rate of fire. It does a, lo a lot of damage. It's, um, but it's also at the same time kind of hard to control, yeah. kind of hard to master. So it, it's in that sense way more demanding from the player. But if you do, you really are a beast with that thing. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really good to lock down defensive areas. Uh, it fires at 1,000 rounds per minute and it can be upgraded to up to 1,200 rounds per minute. Yeah. So it really yeah. rains. Yeah, it's a beast. <laughs> yeah. It's a beast. Uh, when it came to the medic class during the open beta, we, we had, uh, the, the players had access to a couple of weapons, among them the SOMI and the MP40. So this is going to be a super leading question, but is there a new weapon that you maybe want to show us? Yeah, so on, on the... Uh, SMG Spectrum, we have the Xiaomi that is pretty much this super, super close range, high rate of fire weapon. And then we have the MP34 mm. that fires much slower, but actually has a better ability to push a bit on the range. It can even actually take a little bit of some of the uh, assault rifles. And we have a bunch of specialization that really um, help with tailoring the, the weapon experience to the player's play style. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the, um, like you mentioned, the Suomi is probably more on the, the, the really short range of the, the spectrum, and this weapon, MP34, is more on the other side. It's a bit more lenient in terms of its range. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not much of a medic player. I usually go for the scout. Do you have something for me as well? Yeah, we have new fun toys there as yeah. well, which is the Craig Jorgensen. Mm -hmm. Which I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Otherwise, you will hear about it. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, which is uh, one of our uh, bolt action sniper rifles for the recon class. Um, we've shown two sniper rifles so far, bolt actions, and uh, this one is probably more on the end of the Car 98K, which is a more like, kind of like our heavy variant of uh, sniper rifles. Uh, it has a nice punch to it when you fire it, and it has a really cool reload animation mm, as yeah. well. Mm. And for the assault class, we've actually only shown one assault rifle, both during the Alpha and the Beta. But I'm, I'm just going to guess there's more to come here as well. Yes. <laughs> so uh, with launch, we're introducing the uh, Sturmgewehr 1.5, which is another assault rifle that fires a bit faster than the STG. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit harder to control, so it's better suited for slightly shorter ranges than what the STG would be able to do. Uh, so it's a bit more specialized towards those ranges. Yeah. It's a very, very cool weapon. Yeah. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, I'm going to ask you if you have anything that you would like to just mention, something you forgot to talk about, anything? Uh, well, one thing that we can bring up is that we are already starting to look uh, into weapons for our Tides of War mm -hmm. seasons. And the one thing that we really uh, want to do is uh, not only expand upon the existing weapon classes that we have, but also introduce new weapon classes mm. uh, post-launch so that we can really deepen and, and kind of widen the player experience there and uh, allow for more, be more lenient on our ranges uh, on certain classes and yeah. that kind of uh, fun stuff. Yeah, there's a lot coming to Ties of War, there's like overall, <laughs> yeah. so it's yeah. going to be interesting. Like I said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much for coming and uh, talking about the weapons and everything that we're doing over there. Um, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. We will be back in a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully we will see each other back then. So thank you very much and bye.